Welcome back to Design Bundles YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Crystal and today we are going to be sublimating tumblers. So not only are we sublimating different types of tumblers, we're sublimating them in different ways. So today we are going to be sublimating using our tumbler press. We're going to be sublimating using our convection oven and we are going to attempt to sublimate a tumbler in the Cricut Easy Press. So what we're going to do is use some supplies that you possibly may have already in your craft um, stash there to um, accomplish this. So we're going to try out some different stuff today. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so jumping into the first one, we are of course going to test out or show you how to sublimate tumblers using a tumbler press. So I get asked all of the time, which one do I prefer more, a tumbler press or the convection oven? And I actually prefer a tumbler press. Now there is lots of different ones. You guys see me use the Heat Press Nation one quite often. Um, so you guys see that in a lot of our lives and things like that. So the one that's at this studio, I have from Craft Express, which you can also grab on Amazon. So you could definitely check check out lots of different brands out there. You'll find out which one is your favorite. All right. So we're doing this, the um, convection oven that I have, I also have linked down below and then obviously the mug press too. So let's go ahead and talk about the tumblers that we are going to be using. So today we are going to be using a sublimation tumbler. This is a glitter one. So when you get into sublimating tumblers, you want to make sure that you are buying a tumbler that is designed for sublimation. So like I said, lots of different ways, holographic, there's a billion more compared to what I have here. Okay. So I've got a glitter one here. I love the silver ones because it shows on here more. So we've got a glitter tumbler here. We have, um, this one right here is actually glow in the dark. So it has a matte feel, it almost feels like it's been spray painted white. I don't think it has, I think it's the way it's obviously came. I purchased these from Etsy. I'll have my link below. These are green, so they're going to glow green, but you can get them in purple, lots of different colors. So make sure y'all check that out as well. And then we have this gloss one. So what I love about the, this is the more standard one that you would find. These are all 20 ounce, but this is like gloss white. And what's really cool about these is it looks like epoxy so whenever you go to do these tumblers and you press them sometimes they look really good that it's hard to tell whether it's epoxy or sublimation so this is just a standard one that you may see a lot of people doing and so for this one we will probably go ahead and do just to be safe let's go ahead and stick for this one Let we're gonna do this one in the uh, Cricut mug press and then we're gonna go ahead and press the glitter one in the tumbler press and then we'll do the glow-in-the-dark one in the um, we'll do that one in the convection oven okay so here we go. So you could do all of these in each one of these, but this is just the way that I'm gonna go and do it, if I can even remember this order. So this design right here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys down here so you guys can see these designs. This one right here comes in a bundle. There's tons of different colors. There's a pumpkin one in orange I love. So I think this one would be really cool for the glow in the dark. So we're gonna do that on the glow in the dark. This one here, I'm trying to decide whether the gloss or the glitter, but I think I'm gonna do this one on the glitter here. I think it's gonna look cool. Has a lot of chunky glitter design, so this one's gonna be on the glitter, so we will do that one now. And then this really cool design here, I am gonna do on the gloss, just to show you how close to epoxy this one looks. So I really do love this designer from our marketplace. I'll have her link down below. Um, her stuff looks really, really realistic too, as well as our designers, but if you guys are wanting to um, check out a ton more tumblers make sure you guys definitely check that out all right so here we go so i've got a paper trimmer and i'm going to trim each one of these down to size as i'm going along so what's really cool about our tumbler wraps is they are already sized out for you so all you got to do is print them i actually use my sawgrass printer to do so and all i do is i take the file and i drag it to the sawgrass uh, print there is a sawgrass print manager folder on your desktop and so if you drag that it'll open up that print manager and then um, you're ready to print so that's all i did each one of these you want to remove the lid before you get started you never want to press your tumblers with those lids on so now what you want to do is you always want to use like a clean cloth to remove any sort of um, lint or debris. I've already adjusted my pressure. We're ready to go. We're going to go ahead and get ready to wrap. So I'm just going to center this design here. I'm going to squeeze this tight, right? So I'm going to squeeze it as tight as I can. I'm going to get one side and then I'm going to hold that tape. So I'm going to press that down, but I'm going to use my tape to pull these tight. So I'm going to do it in that direction so I can help pull that seam super tight. So I'm gonna do that at first all the way across. 
It's something I recently just started doing and I've noticed that it really does help me. So once again, get that tape down at the top and then you're going to pull nice and tight so you guys can see how close that can pull that. And so let me go and do the same thing at the bottom. There we go. Now I can already see that I'm off a little bit on, um, I may have trimmed off just a little bit too much there. So I've got a tiny gap with this one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that tape down there. And then I think that's probably pretty good. I'll add one tiny little piece of tape here. There we have it. Now I'm not one that wraps my tumblers at the top and the bottom. You can definitely do so. I usually just have a couple pieces here. Um, sometimes I tape it all the way down, sometimes I don't. All right, so now we're ready to go. And what I like to do is instead of the tape being straight up, I actually turn it to the side a little bit. I'm gonna get it in there. We have it 365 for 70 seconds. Now, when you go to press this, it should not be super hard to press. You just need it to press. The way that I do is I call it the tug test. So before I turn on my press, I'll put it in there and then I'll try to tug it out. So I put half the tumbler in, half out, and I'll try to tug it out. If it won't let me pull it out, then you're good to go. If it's pulling it out, you need a little bit more pressure, right? So I'm gonna keep it nice and even across the board. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my, my gloves on here. These gloves, I have a link down below as well. I found them on Amazon for like $6 and they're identical to the ones I normally use, the We Are, Keep, we are Memory Keeper ones, so check it out. All right, we're gonna open that. We're gonna go ahead and rotate it a little bit. And we're gonna press again for another 70 seconds. Now, while that's going, let's go ahead and just finish trimming these down. We're down to our last few seconds, so I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to pull this guy out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and peel it while it's hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my second glove here so we'll be ready to peel this. So we're gonna pop it out. Now remember, this is the glitter. So it's really cool because it's going to look like you've applied glitter with epoxy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and peel. How cute is this? Now normally I don't um, press the silver piece, but I'm regretting never pressing the silver piece. So that top piece that's not covered in glitter, I usually don't, but look at that. How gorgeous is that? It's so cool. But it looks like it is a glitter tumbler. So nice, you guys can see where I was off. I was a little bit short on my um, on my seam there, but you would have seen how nicely those would have went together, but I really love this. Now this one as well came from a bundle. So each one of these are from different um, bundles. So like this design is by itself. Um, and then these other two are from bundles. So uh, there's different designs with these. So definitely make sure you check it out. This one is the Halloween queen, but I love those colors together. I just think it is gorgeous. All right, so now that I've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to our um, convection oven. Inside of my convection, I like to keep a thermostat like this. You can grab them locally, um, usually Walmart and things like that. I'll have one link below. These are perfect to put in there because the um, temperature time that's on there is usually never accurate. And you wanna be around 370 five or so you don't want to go too high or you will burn them and then you want to do this for around four to five minutes so once again depending on what works best for you so I'm gonna do 375 all right so as you can see I have started our convection oven it's ready to go I'm setting it at 375 now depending on so say for example if my press mine is gonna come in at 365 on the little thermostat I may want to bring it up to around 385 just to get those numbers correctly so what I'm actually going by is my digital my thermostat is that that's not digital the little thermostat that I put inside of there once it beeps and it says it's ready to go if I need to bring it up or down I'll do that as well okay so we've got that going and then I usually put around 30 seconds um, 30 minutes if you will just to kind of get me a time going there but once I actually put the tumbler inside I'll actually do it for like I said around five to six minutes a few things you're gonna need for your convection oven you're gonna need something called subla shrink and what this is is it's this little shrink wrap so if you've ever um, made those bags baskets and you put shrink wrap around it it's like that but these are made for heat so these ones right here are like heat resistant if you will um instant now when i first started doing these tumblers i thought you needed a heat gun to shrink it around it and then put it in there but you don't so i'm going to show you today you can just put it in there set it in and then it'll shrink around it but then when it comes to our second hack we're going to do here in a minute we're going to use a heat gun all right so we're going to be using this design and now this one is the glow in the dark one and i can tell because it's matte so this one right here has a gloss to it. I'll bring it, hopefully you guys can see that. So my glow in the dark is a matte and then this is gloss. Once again, you want to remove any sort of moisture, moisture, any sort of lint or debris. I make way too much t-shirts, y'all. 
All right, so here we go. We've already trimmed this one down. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my first piece here, just like that. We're going to center up our design. All right, from the top to the bottom. There we have it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this guy around. Now, one thing I don't usually like to do here, I don't really like for it to overlap per se. So this one right here is giving me a little bit of overlap. So I'm actually gonna go back and just take a smidge off of it. And get it here. And then we're just gonna make sure I'm getting everything straight. So one thing you wanna pay attention to when you do this is keeping your paper straight. You see how mine's wanting to kinda of get a little wonky? So I'm gonna go ahead and pull. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually do this side so that way we can I can show you again. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that tape down in the center there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pull tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and push from this side and then pull. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. But since I've got that center there and I'm overlapping a little bit, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and do this here. Just like that. And then I'll go ahead and get one more, just like that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pop this in the center. So in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and trim down our last one. All right, so once again, we're gonna go ahead and take this guy like this. I'm gonna set it in here. I'm gonna let you guys kind of watch that action happen. See how it's already just shrinking around it for us? I'm gonna go ahead and shut that and it's gonna finish shrinking around it. So you don't need that heat gun. The heat of the convection oven or alone will do that. Now, for example, for my next tack, I'm actually going to need a heat gun. It's not gonna do it for us. So you guys will see that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this out. We'll be back in just a little bit. I'm gonna let this go for around five minutes. Now, one thing I also wanna mention that is I do like to flip it. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. We've got about two minutes left. Around two and a half, you wanna go ahead and flip it. All right, so if you ever notice that you're starting to, your subless shrink is starting to melt or anything like that, you're good to go. So if you start to see any sort of bubbles or anything like that, go ahead and rip it out. And you wanna work pretty quickly. I like to fill mine off pretty fast, and there you have it. Look at how cool this thing looks, so good. So I actually had an extra minute and 30 seconds on the clock, around a minute and 20, and I pulled it. So this was around four, I would say four minutes is where I got this. So you can definitely see how nice that turned out. I do have a little bit of a seam, but I did trim this one down or I probably would have had a better one. So this is that glow in the dark. So we're gonna go ahead and set this aside, let it completely cool down. And then um, I'll get ready to show you guys a little clip of this one here in just a bit. All right, so for our last one, we are using the Cricut Mug Press today. I've got a heat gun. You can use a craft size, whatever heat gun that you have, you're just gonna use it to uh, shrink your subless shrink around it. I've got my Cricut um, mat here. We've already wrapped it. You've seen us tape it and everything else. Remove your lid. And then it, there's a few different things you can do. So I have a link down below to an Amazon. Um, it's this silicone wrap, if you will, that was designed for inserting. It's not from Cricut, it's a third party. They were designed to put in the mug press here so that way you could add in different things like the tumblers, etc. So I've got that link down below. And then these are a few things that you may already have and we're gonna put these to the test today. So I do have this green pad and I know I did a video a while back, maybe a year ago using this and it was successful. So I actually had trimmed one down but I have it at the other studio. So I'm gonna use this one but if I, if I do use this one, I'm actually gonna fold it in half because ultimately this is identical to the rubber pads that um, you can purchase, like I said, on Amazon. Now this, in case you guys are wondering what this is, because I never even told you, if you guys have been pressing any sort of ceramic, um, the glass ornaments and things like that, the tiles, you may have purchased this green pad. This is made for um, pressing, so your heat press and things like that, to applying sublimation, and this will help, number one, shield your item, but it also distributes that heat very evenly. So there's other things like Nomex pads that are made out of felt and things like that. So I've got this one here. And another thing that I actually have here are these pressing pads. So these are actually from Heat Press Nation. You can get it in bigger ones. So ultimately this is a mouse pad. I don't wanna say to use a mouse pad because I don't know how heat resistant that is. Um, but these ones here are made for withstanding high heat and things like that. So this one's actually made for a sleeve. That's why it's, so you can even 
cut this down. I'm not going to. I'm going to show you guys using it without cutting it down. So once again, this is to be able to press HTB on a sleeve, get rid of those seams and things like that. So this is linked down below from Heat Press Nation, and it comes with one for a pocket. It comes with a great big one for t-shirts, one that looks like a mouse pad size for maybe onesies and things like that. Ultimately, it's similar to a pressing pillow, um, but this is what I started using before I ever started using a pressing pillow. So this is just something I have. So these may be some things that you have laying around. And like I said, I think I'm gonna use this one today. So first up, let's go ahead and let's shrink this around. So I've got it on my Cricut pad. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get high heat going. All right, perfect. So as you can see here, making sure it's cool to the touch before I touch it. So you're just going to go around it just like this. So you're just gonna shrink it. So this is gonna give us that pressure we need. And what I do like about this is, like I said, I stole this from Michael for this, um, Mr. Crafty Pants, if you will. So that way I could protect my Cricut Easy Press and so I can protect these things because I don't want any sort of sublimation ink or anything like that, especially when we're messing around with something that technically is not designed for doing this. So I've got my Cricut Mug Press plugged in and heating up, so it should almost be ready to go for us. So we've already shrunk this with our Subla Shrink, like I said, so there we have that. And then we're gonna go ahead, like I said, I'm gonna play around with this one. I don't wanna cut it down because I wanna reuse it for its purpose. So I'm just gonna get it in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it right down here at the bottom at the center. All right, just like that. Perfect. Just making sure it's not hanging out at the bottom that I've got a nice, um, perfect little edge there. And so there we have it. Now make sure if you're gonna do something like this, I measured and it's gonna perfectly fit two times. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and drop this guy down in here. So we're gonna go ahead and carefully get it all the way down in here. So we're just kind of keeping these guys together. Perfect. And now we're gonna go ahead and press. Boom. If you guys are familiar with the Cricut Mug Press, there's no timer, temp, or anything. So it's at the perfect temperature we need, but the time is what we're gonna play with. So the way that I'm personally gonna do it is two of the flashing lights and a half. So technically three lights. So once it gets to that third light, I'm gonna have to just, I can either time it with a stopwatch on my phone for around 20 seconds is what I'm looking for. Because with the tumbler press, I do 70 seconds. So um, right now we're on the third one, so I'd wanna do around, um, like I said, around the 10, um, 10 seconds, an extra 10 seconds, and an extra 20 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it at this point. I'm gonna hold onto this, but I'm gonna rotate my tumbler here, and then I'm gonna press again. So ultimately I'm making sure because this gap right here is not getting pressed. So you just wanna rotate it enough to where this gap is now back behind here somewhere, okay? So once this gets to that third light again, so it's gonna be two and a half minutes ultimately, two minutes and 20 seconds, I'm gonna go ahead at that point and I'm gonna get my heat gloves on and we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna do the opposite side. So we'll do the exact same thing. So when we flip it over, we're gonna do two and a half um, of those beeps. So basically it'll be on the third light. I keep saying beep, but it's the light. It'll be on the third light. So let's let this get there. In the meantime, I'm gonna get my heat gloves because this time we are going to be handling this a little bit. Now the one thing is I could actually leave this guy in place when I open it. I'm just gonna pull this out and then I'm gonna insert that back down, okay? So we are on one flashing right now, so I'll update you guys in just a bit. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it just a few more seconds. Whenever you're playing around with stuff like this, the Cricut Mug Press may get a little funny, so keep in mind, you could void your warranty and things like that. So like mine just skipped on over to four, but it's actually on that third beep. So now, like I said, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guy out, and so carefully like this, and then I'm gonna flip it around. So. I'm gonna go ahead and get it like this, and we're gonna pop this guy all the way down, just like that, just making sure everything is covered. Let me look at this, I'm trying to make sure of how far down, perfect. I should be pretty good right about there. And now we're gonna press it again. So once again, once it gets to that third beep, the third light, if you will, I can't say beep. Once it gets to that third light, um, we're gonna, about 10 seconds, we're going to rotate it for our last time and press it one more time for the third light. All right, so once again, my Cricut um, mug press acted a little weird, skipped on down to the fifth light. So I'm just gonna give it a few seconds and then we're gonna pop it open. We're going to rotate it around like so and we're going to press again. So same thing, third light's what we're looking for. Okay, so 
I'm definitely going to do more time on this one because I tried to take a little sneak peek and it just was not enough. So let's go ahead and do this and we're going to pull it out. So I honestly think we are going to pull this guy out and we're gonna set it aside. So I did get a little bit of heat here, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that out of the way. It did survive it, but I don't think it was enough. All right, so let's go ahead and go in with the green pad. So this is one right here is going to be similar to the ones I'm recommending from Amazon. The ones from Amazon, you're only gonna need one. It's a really thick, I think it comes in three different sizes depending on how big your tumbler is. So you'll be able to fit it and it's like thinner th all the way to thick. There's three different ones that come in it for around 20 bucks, right? So now, I'm gonna go ahead and pop it inside. So if you guys, once again, own the green, uh, it's called a green pad ultimately. And what it's designed for once again is if you press any sort of ceramic or um, any sort of tiles or anything like that. So this is made to withstand that heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it go again. So for this round, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna let it get all the way to the fourth light. So as soon as it gets to the fourth light, I'm gonna rotate it, press it again until it gets to the fourth light. Once it does it, I'm gonna flip it over. So ultimately you're doing this four times between the rotates okay so I'm gonna go ahead and let this go until we get to that fourth light all right so we've got that fourth light I'm gonna go ahead and pop it open I'm gonna hold my green pad I'm just gonna rotate it enough to where we get past that opening just like that so we're gonna press it again once again I'm wanting to get it to that fourth light as soon as we get it there this time we're going to flip it around and then um, we'll have two more times after this all right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back out and we are going to work with it in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this here. Well, I'm trying to decide what I wanna do here. I think we will do it like this, all right? And now I'm gonna go ahead and carefully get it back down in there. One thing that I'm doing too is I'm being mindful and I'm keeping it off of that little metal platen piece down there. So I'm trying to keep it lifted up off of that. All right, last time we're gonna pop it open. We're going to rotate it enough to where we're past that. And we're gonna press it one last time. So this is our very last time. And then we'll do the big reveal and see if it worked. All right, so since this is our very final side of it, if you will, whenever it comes to the Cricut Mug Press, it is very finicky. So this thing has sensors built into it. It knows whether it has the mugs in it or not. Um, I've played with it in the past. So like right now, my lights keep going off and when they go off, which means it is no longer supplementing because there's no heat going to it. So I'm gonna kinda, it's on my last round, so I'm just gonna keep popping it on and off until I can get it going. Once again, this is something that you could actually destroy potentially because you could fail your Cricut mug press, so there could be issues there. Um, so you definitely wanna be mindful because you could void those warranties. I do wanna show you that it is something that, it's a question we've been asked so many times, can you do it? Yes, ultimately, it's a lot of work. So I would personally recommend that either A, you invest into if you can't afford a tumbler press right out of the gate that maybe you invest into a convection oven a toaster oven if you will you could find those at goodwill yard sales um, it's a good idea to find one used if you can and you found it for 10 20 bucks because ultimately you're only going to use it for sublimation so you don't want to throw when we talk about convection you don't want to do that in your kitchen appliances because you are working with sublimation gases so always keep that in mind so i think that's pretty much it I think that's all it's going to allow me. It's going to shut me down. It's just continuing to shut me down here at the end. A few things that have happened, I'm gonna go ahead and bring you guys down here. You guys can see my sublet shrink got down there. Um, ultimately, you could do away with the sublet shrink and you can wrap it with a piece of copy paper um, to protect everything. I've got a few black marks from where I was playing around with this, which honestly, when I was messing with it, I probably should have had it in this direction inside of there. Um, just a few different things, playing around with it. Um, but I should be able to ultimately wipe those away. Like the sublet shrink, as soon as it dries down, I should be able to just flake that right off. So I'm not concerned, but once again, that is something that you are risking. I think Mr. Crafty Pants definitely did more homework than I did. I wanted to be able to just kind of test it right out of the gate, playing around with a few things. I tried to internally try to think about the time and temp of a tumbler press and playing around with that. But like I said, I had a lot of finicky stuff going on. So if you guys want to see a little bit more success, I'll definitely check that out. But let's go ahead and test it out. So we're going to go ahead and remove our sublet shrink. Now, before I finish this, I want you guys to stop pause, go in the comment section and tell me if you think that this worked. 
All right, so now that you guys are back, um, let's go ahead and check it out and see if you guys were right. All right, so now that we have our stable shrink off, we're gonna go ahead and go remove our heat tape here. So I'm gonna go all the way down these pieces here. So now we're gonna go ahead and roll it. Oh my gosh, it worked. Even after all of that, it worked. Holy guacamole. Now, when I tell you guys about this design, I told you guys I loved it. Check this guy out. This is with that gloss I was talking about. Does that not look like there is epoxy on it? So you, it looks like we've got glitter going on here. Um, it just looks so, so cool. Look at those colors, gorgeous. But this looks so realistic. And I think that gloss really just makes it look like it has epoxy on there. But it was a success, like, oh my gosh. It is so gorgeous, those colors. And what I love about these wraps here is you can't tell where your seams are because the way that they line up with this. So you have your lines here, you can't even tell where your seams are. It's very, very cool. So I really, really love this. I'm so excited that it actually worked. Honestly, I didn't have high hopes because of the materials I used. Now, for Michael, he did use the correct um, rubber, if you will, that was designed from a third party, once again, to use with a Cricut. So you're probably not gonna have the flashing lights and all of those things. So I highly recommend that you guys definitely check that out. But I wanted to try today with some of the things that I had on hand. Uh, like I said, this is one that I've actually tried out before um, and it's made for heat pressing. And it's something you may wanna get in your stash. These are perfect, especially coming into the holiday season. These are designed for pressing those ceramic tiles, ceramic ornaments, glass ornaments, and all of those things. It's gonna keep that nice, even heat distribution, as well as protect those items. So I recommend you check this out as well. I'll also have this one linked down below. Um, but if it was me personally, and I was trying to turn and just convert my Cricut Mug Press into a tumbler press as well, so that way I don't have to buy anything else but this, and then you can press tumblers for like 169 bucks. I would highly recommend just buy that third party. Use the link I got down below for y'all. But there it is. So here is all of our tumblers. Let me go ahead and bring them back in for you. All right, so let's quickly recap really quick. So we did three tumblers today, three different methods. So we had the tumbler press, and this is a glitter one. So if you guys want that really cool glitter look, I don't think it 100% has a glitter look per se, but it does give you a different texture. Um, it does appear somewhat as glitter, I would say far away. I wanna say more texture and things like that. I do love that. So this one was the, with the tumbler press. Then we have a glow in the dark one. Once again, lots of different designs with this guy. This one has a matte look to it because it is for the glow in the dark. So it has a matte look. I really do like this one too. Um, but this one's ultimately gonna be, you can pretty much tell that it is sublimation and not epoxy because of that matte look. And then last but not least, you guys have this one, which was with the Cricut Tumblr Press. And I honestly thought it was gonna fail on my part because of the materials I use. And it was quite successful. So freaking good. I cannot even believe it. Now, if you guys are going to be making any tumblers this holiday season, we would love to see them. So make sure you guys join our Facebook community group because you guys can share your projects over there so we can see them, we can give you guys some love. And then you can also see lots of inspiration from other crafters just like yourself over there as well. So make sure you guys join that. And then also check out our Instagram because I do take a little bit of more of a close-up photo of this. And there's a lot of fun going on on Instagram as well. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.